How's it going folks? I'm Dust with Dustfit and this is the new Wahoo Element Roam. So you could call this the Roam 2, the Roam V2, but in true Wahoo fashion, they're just calling it the new Element Roam. So it's been over three years since Wahoo launched their original Roam, which was their largest and most capable bike computer. And today they're updating it with some nice new features, including increased storage, more colors on the display, dual band GPS, as well as some other nice new updates. Now I'll be covering a lot in this video, like GPS accuracy, usability, as well as battery life. But there are a few features that aren't quite ready yet at least at the time of this filming but I will have a follow-up video in a few weeks when those features are released so make sure to subscribe to get a notification when that video comes out and by the way some of those features actually will also be available on previous generation element devices anyways we'll talk about those features in just one bit but let's first talk about what's new on the new Rome. So Wahoo usually doesn't like to reinvent the wheel. What they do is just take what works and improve upon it with each new generation. And that's what they've done here is take the original Roam and added some new features which make it more accurate, easier to see, and more convenient to use. In terms of the hardware, as you can see, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between the new Roam and the original. It's nearly the same, but the biggest difference on the outside is that they now have raised buttons just like the new Bolt V2 versus the concave buttons on the original Roam and the original Bolt. I never really had any complaints about the buttons on the original Roam, but those little pockets did tend to collect a little bit of sweat. Kind of gross, I know, but no more of that grossness with the new Roam. Another thing with the buttons on the original Roam is that if you had really thick gloves on, they could be harder to press. With thin gloves, they were totally fine, but with winter gloves, it was where it was a little bit more challenging. With these new raised buttons on the new Roam, they work great even with thick gloves. The new buttons on the new Roam also tend to be a little clickier, I found. Not sure if you can hear that versus the original Roam. Still clicky, but definitely not quite as clicky as the new one. Another nice touch is that they changed the position of the power button slash menu button where it's now a little bit higher, which pretty much all but eliminates accidental double presses if you're using two fingers to press either the power button or the up button together, where on the original Roam that happened to be on more than one occasion where when I went to press the up key, I'd also be pressing the menu key. Oh, and then the up and down key as well as the power button, they're also just slightly larger too. And then on the bottom of the unit, we have another change in, yup, USB-C charging versus the micro USB-C on the original. And then for battery life, they claim up to 17 hours and that seems to hold up pretty well. So like on this ride here, I had the new Roam paired up with an Ant Plus heart rate monitor and I just had it on the main data page the entire time and it nailed it right at 17 hours. However, I have found that battery life can differ though if you've loaded in a route and you have it on the map page most of the time. Like on this ride, I had it paired with two external sensors and had it on the map page nearly the entire ride and it dropped just a bit, but still not too shabby. And then for the display, it still has a 2.7 inch color display, but they've upped the colors from eight colors on the original now up to 64 colors. And it's also supposed to be a higher contrast display. And it's sort of hard to tell on video, but it does seem to have a much more contrast. The original Rome was already very easy to see outside, but this new Rome is even better, especially in direct sunlight. And then in terms of the additional colors, you can see more of these colors with things like navigation prompts, some slightly different colors in the maps, as well as the color indicators for power and heart rate zones. Those are actually probably some of my favorite uses of the color on the Rome 2 as well as the Bolt V2. Another thing I noticed with the new Rome is that the beeps are actually much louder. So here's the original Rome, new Rome, a lot louder. But just like the original Roam, the new Roam also has features like their perfect view zoom feature where you'll be able to have up to 11 data fields on a page at one time, but then you can zoom in on those data fields based on the order of your priority. And then the new Roam also has the side and top quick look LEDs, which can be used to indicate things like zones. Oh, and the new Element Roam is also IPX7 water resistant, and I can attest that it's perfectly fine in some heavy rain. Another new thing with the new Roam is that it now has dual band satellite system technology and we're starting to see this roll out on a lot of new devices lately and what this technology can do is leverage two satellite frequencies at the same time for increased accuracy. And where this can come into play is around like really tall buildings, tall rock faces or a lot of overhead tree cover where GPS and satellite signals can get a little bit iffy. Now the thing to consider though with this type of technology is that it does tend to consume more battery life but Wahoo's been able to retain the same 17 hour battery life as the original Roam even with this more accurate GPS chipset. And then in terms of the accuracy for this 50k-ish road ride, good to go for total distance compared to the other devices that were also using dual band satellite system technology. And then for the finer detail of the GPS tracks, things look pretty solid. Like all along all of these straight sections, the new Rome was pretty much right in line with the other devices. On these curves and corners, again, pretty good, but I did notice a little bit of drift on just a handful of corners here and there, but overall the new Rome did a really good job. Now to really test out the new dual band satellite system technology, I also took it mountain biking. And on the following example, 
example, this ride had a ton of switchbacks and a lot of overhead tree cover. So this was just a really good test to see what it could do. And then for the total distance, again, pretty close to the two other test devices that were also using dual band satellite systems. But you'll also notice that the original roam was a bit farther off and we'll be able to see where those discrepancies may have been coming from when we take a look at the GPS tracks. So as I started to head up the mountain, this was through some pretty heavily wooded areas and we see that the original roam was kind of, well, roaming a little bit, I guess you could say, but the new roam was right in line with the other devices with dual band. And then on this corner, the new roam cut in just slightly, but not too big a deal. The original roam was kind of just doing its own thing. On these wide open switchbacks over here, you can see that all the devices were in line with each other as well as the trail, so no worries there, but this area was kind of in the wide open. What's more interesting though on this ride are some super tight switchbacks as I started to descend over here. You'll see that the new roam was definitely doing much better than the original roam, but on just a handful of corners, it wasn't quite in line with the trail. Nothing crazy by any means, but just a little bit wide on a few of them. Another new thing with the new Roam is that it now has 32 gigabytes of onboard storage versus the 16 gigabytes of the original, and this makes it so you can have nearly all worldwide maps loaded on the device at one time. The 16 gigabytes on the original was a bit tough where you had to pick and choose a bit more carefully what regions you had loaded, but with the 32 gigabytes of storage on the new Roam, almost all worldwide maps are preloaded on the device where they say it basically has about a 90 to 95% worldwide coverage out of the box. Another thing that you can do today is that you can now do Wahoo system workouts outdoors on your Element bike computer. So all you do here is just add a system workout to your calendar in the system app. And as long as your system app and the Element app are using the same account, it should just pop up on your Element device. And what's cool about this too is that it also is coming to previous generation devices like the Bolt V2 that I have right here. And then another new feature rolling out today, which again isn't just for the new Roam, but also for previous generation Element devices, is a backup and restore feature where settings like data fields and data screens are saved and uploaded to the cloud. And then you'll be able to restore these settings to your device if for some reason you need to do a reset. And then yet another thing that's also rolling out today is Super Sapiens integration for continuous glucose monitoring. And then just like the original Roam, the new Roam has, in my opinion, really good navigation features like easy to use maps, which have a lot of contrast, Chevron showing the direction of travel, but with a new display with more colors, it's even better to use. And in regards to navigation, there's also gonna be a new feature called Summit Segments for Climbs. Now, unfortunately, this feature isn't available as of today, so I can't really give you a true life demo of it. But what happens with Summit Segments is when you load in a route, it'll break out individual climb segments on a ride, and these will just automatically pop up as you're approaching a climb where it'll give you information on the climb, such as an elevation, profile with the position you're at on the climb, color-coded portions of that particular climb indicating different grades, the amount of vertical distance to go, amount of horizontal distance to go, as well as the grade, and then it also has an estimated finish time. And this is really nice to see out of Wahoo because Garmin's Climb Pro feature as well as Hammerhead's Climb Mirror feature, those are just really handy features to have to manage your efforts on longer climbs. Oh, and by the way, this new Summit Segments feature will also be coming to the Bolt V2 as well as the original Roam. And then yet another new feature that again isn't just exclusive to the new room, but again, isn't something that I can actually show you today, is a feature called public ride sharing where you're able to share a route directly from the Element app. So what this feature is intended to do is let's say you show up for a group ride where they didn't share their route beforehand, what you'll be able to do is share the route directly from the Element app. And again, I can't really show you a demo of this feature and I'll have more details in my follow up video that's coming soon. So the new Element Roam is a nice little update and continues with Wahoo's trend of updating devices versus completely reinventing the wheel. What's also nice about the new Roam is that the price really hasn't increased all that much from the original Roam, at least when it first came out. But now you get increased storage, a better display, as well as dual band sideline systems. But one does have to wonder though is that are those features compelling enough to make an original Roam owner want to upgrade? So the new Element Roam may be more of an update than a brand new device, but what I have to say is that I'm really stoked to see that many of those software features that I just talked about previously while many of those are going to be available on some previous generation element devices. And that's probably what Wahoo's really well known for is backporting as many new software features as possible. And it's probably another thing that keeps Wahoo owners very happy. Anyhow, if you have any questions about the new Roam that I didn't cover in this video, definitely leave those in the comments section down below. And on your way down there, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor, just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy riding and we will see you in the next video.